Good evening, everyone. I am live with the one, the only, the legendary Usama Duck Duck. We're going to talk about Allah, Muhammad, and the Quran's revelation of error. I love that name, the revelation of error. It's a fantastic name. It's it's so descriptive, so humorous, but also so spot on. And we're going to finish off with Adam today, and then we're going to talk about Idris, otherwise known as Enoch, and add a few surprises. And as, as you know, Usama is full of surprises, and uh, I think he's going to show us the incoherence of the Quranic narrative. So, hello, Usama. Welcome back. Hello, and greetings to you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It is uh, my joy to be with you and all our wonderful audience, brother. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. So, welcome, everyone. Um, looking forward to your chats. You know, I'll be monitoring those and uh, to your comments afterwards. And I hope you've been enjoying the series. This will be a lengthy series. Usama and I have planned to do this all the way through to 2035. And we'll be increasing the show time to seven hours per session. So that'll be <laughs> 28 hours per month if, I, if my maths is correct. Just kidding. Mashallah, so, mashallah. <laughs> you so welcome. <laughs> it's, it's good, brother. God is good. God is good. Here's the deal. Uh, we stopped in our uh, last program, Brother Lloyd, on uh, uh, the sons of Adam. And uh, may you ask a question? Why did I say the sons of Adam? I mean, uh, are we talking about the only two sons of Adam? Uh, no. Actually, Adam have lots of sons and daughters, as we're going to see that from the Genesis account. But the problem is Muhammad in the mm -hmm. Quran only know of two sons of Adam. Uh, that's why Muslim scholars like Al Tabari, Ibn Kassir, and others will tell us the sons of Adam. As Allah Don't mentioned, me, do, they, do, do they call them Cain and Abel, or do they call them Mickey and Mouse? Or do they call them Habib and Kabib? Uh, well, the, well, in the Quran, there is no names. I love it how Muhammad hardly mentioned any names in the Quran. And when he mentioned names, as you hear me say, repeating myself a hundred times, maybe a thousand, they mean. We go to the year 20, what, what, what year you said? 2035. 20, if we go to 2045, you will hear it at least a thousand times. But whenever Muhammad mentioned names, he always mentioned the wrong names, wrong pronunciation, as we're going to see today, uh, wrong location, uh, wrong century. I mean, think about it. We know from the Bible, a man by the name Haman. And Haman is just happened to be uh, during the life of Queen Esther, uh, and that is actually up uh, north. Somehow, somehow mm -hmm. Muhammad put Haman with Pharaoh and Moses in Egypt. It's like, wait a minute, you're talking about a thousand years apart. We never have any Haman in the history of Egypt. It's not even Egyptian name. So it's not, it's like, uh, like coming to America and uh, find uh, one of the early uh, fathers by the name Hussein or Ali or Mustafa. Of course, it's not true. You know that the early fathers of America, they were British and they were Spanish, they were French. They did not know Hassan or Ali or Mahmoud, okay? So how in the world Muhammad did but Haman was Pharaoh and Moses in Egypt? That's a mystery. I wish for Muslims to answer. And uh, so anyway, so, but in, in most, most of the Quran, he will not mention names, period. He's like the, the one on the right side, the, the guy in the middle. Uh, uh, the, the three were together there. Which one? We don't know. Two of them said, I'm not kidding you. That's how uh, Allah uh, is. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing. The Quran yeah. doesn't have the names of Muhammad's wives. It doesn't have the only woman it mentions essentially is Mother Mary. And it also puts her in Moses's time. Although, because obviously they dispute that, that, that little embarrassing fact. It doesn't know the names of the prophets. And it mentions Jesus several times more than it mentions Muhammad. Is the book about Muhammad or about Jesus? Exactly. And it mentions Moses far more than it mentions Muhammad too. It's really odd. And and, and sometimes and, and, and continue with, with your thoughts. Sometimes he mentions the name of the person, the, the first name and the last name. But I mean, uh, what's we, the early names and the latest name. For example, we talk about Jacob, Jacob, Jacob on the Quran, and suddenly he said Israel. So wait a minute, who is Israel? Oh, that was Jacob. And uh, how did Jacob name change to Israel? Uh, only Allah knows. And if we tell the Muslims. The true biblical account of how God blessed Jacob and changed his name to Israel, they mock the idea. They mock the teachings about So, okay, you tell me, how in the world did Jacob's name change to Israel? 
There is no answer. Also, if you think about it, you talk about Abraham, Abraham, Abraham. So what is the original name of Abraham? You gave me the blessed name, the new name which God gave to Abraham and make him Abraham, but you don't know Abraham. And if you read the biblical account, you know when the name changed. And why? Abraham is the father of one. Abraham is the father of many. So now we know that God is fulfilled his promise to Abraham. And now he is going to have lots of children. So, But when you read the Quran, you see that Abraham was Abraham when he talked to his father while they were worshiping idols. Wrong story, but sorry, was, but the wrong name for the guy. See, this is this maybe in the future, Brother Lloyd, we can do a study on names in the Quran. Uh, that would be funny. Trust me. If you write it down, so in case I forget, because I promise you, sometimes I come up with good ideas to do different shows, and then a month later or a year later, I can't even remember if I need I need to. So names of the Quran, names of the Quran. So anyway, so uh, let's go to uh, Quran chapter five, and we got a couple of verses there uh, to read. I mean. Few verses read uh, about the sons, the sons of. Uh, you can open my book, the uh, the revelation of error, if you want to use it directly, because then you can read my some of my writings, and some of the verses of the Quran without going back and forth. But I actually have to take the Quran anyway. If you can get your Quran ready as well, that we shall good. we go. Uh, and we we are in the story of Adam. Uh, if you keep going to. Maybe beige 55. I don't know what it is in your document. Uh, let me give you just look at the word the sons of Adam. The sons of Adam. The subtitle is the sons of Adam. Uh, it is like maybe four pages, uh, five pages before you get to chapter three. Here we hey, go. You got it. You got it. Praise God. So uh we know that uh, this story is actually copied and corrupted from Genesis chapter 4. That's a fact. And uh, we, like always, Muhammad does not give us any details. It's not just the sons of Adam. Trust me, there's not one story in the Quran where Muhammad gives details. As we uh, go in the future and we do the chapter 12, uh, which is the story of Joseph, that is the best of the Quran. And I, I'm not joking about it. It is the best of the Quran. Why? Because it is the one story which Muhammad have more details than any other writings in the Quran. But even though Joseph is the best of the Quran, still, when you compare it to Genesis account, it is the worst story you can ever read outside the Bible. Imagine with me. The best of the Quran, it's the worst thing you can read out of the Bible in some other book. You have to be right. like somebody under the influence of alcohol and drugs and all this bad stuff so you can write as good as Allah wrote, uh, give to Muhammad in the Quran. So, uh, God is good. Let's, uh, let's, uh, here's, here's the questions, which I always ask questions. When I talk to Muslims, the best way to expose them, to put them in a corner, to let them know that their Quran is not holy, their Quran is not perfect, their Quran is not clear, their Quran cannot be understood. The only way you can understand the Quran is you have to come back to the Bible, come back to the Bible, okay? Let, let me tell you the original account where your Muhammad or his people are trying to help you to understand from the Quran. It is impossible to understand yeah. the Quran without the Bible. So, who well, are... This is who clear are, because the standard that they apply is that the Quran is perfect. They apply the standard of perfection. So if that if it violates that standard, then there is a problem. Yeah. Remember, remember the story about the king. Now we, we said it before. We'll read again. The king who was uh, about to wear the only perfect clothes available in the life of humanity, and he got these wonderful seamsters, and they were working so hard, and they were working to making the clothes, and they asked the king for ten more thousand dollars because he need to buy more fabric, or we need to, and they asked for more money, and they work and work and work, and then the time come for the king to wear that beautiful, amazing suit or dress. And then he walked in the street naked because they actually could not do anything. They were just making a, a, playing a game with the king. And the whole people clapping hand. Yeah, live the king, live forever the king. People were so excited until a child. It took a child, Brother Lloyd. What child said, the king is naked. And I believe if any Muslim 
who have sincere heart, study the Quran without the Islamic glasses. You, you know, we talked about the Islamic glasses. I always have it here in my desk. You see these glasses? It is actually the one you wear when you look at the sun, uh, when you have eclipse, because you don't want to burn your eyes, okay, or, or lose your sight. If Muslim will read the Quran without these glasses, they will shout with that little child, the Quran is naked. The Quran is naked. There's nothing in it. So uh, here is a question, you, as you see it written, who are the brothers? I mean, you're talking about the sons of Adam. Who are they? Okay. I know they offer sacrifice. What is the sacrifice they offered? I mean, I know one of them killed the other. Who killed who? <laughs> Don't read scholars' interpretation because trust me, when you read scholar interpretation, if you have some logic or common sense and ask the same question, except to say, how did al tabari or Ibn Kasir or whoever you read from know the answer for these questions? Because is he a prophet? Should we call Ibn Kasir prophet? Ibn Kasir, peace be upon him. Should mm -hmm. we call somebody prophet al tabari peace be upon him? No, they're not prophets, Lloyd. They cannot give me information more than which is written in the Quran. You, that's not interpretation. That's not hermeneutics. We can call this hogwash or whatever other words you want to say. It is fabrication, not interpretation. So let's move on to see and to prove our point. Read the verses if you don't mind, brother. So from here, Quran 527. And recite to them the news with the truth of the sons of Adam. When they each offered an offering, so it was accepted from one of them and not accepted from the other. Let's stop it for said, a second, brother. Brother, brother, brother. Let's let's just think about these words for short for few sins here. He is Allah is telling us, or Allah is telling Muhammad to tell us to recite, to tell us about the news. With the truth, why Allah said with the truth? I mean, does Allah have to say with, with lies? Here's the story of the sons with the truth, the sons of Adam. So they trying to say that other stories of sons of Adam is false. Oh, maybe the Bible is wrong. I, I got you. Okay, Genesis account. Uh, forget about Genesis 4. We got the truth in the Quran. So listen to this. So it was, so each offer sacrifice. My second question was, what is the sacrifice they offer? Did they offer banana, tomato, <laughs> cucumber? What did they offer? They, did they offered offer camel meat. They offered the correct offering because given the knowledge and circumstances of the day, we would obviously offer what is correct and appropriate under the circumstances which is appropriate to the time and and how would Kamala Harris say it? You gotta ask yourself, you know, you gotta just, just... <laughs> Yeah, you put Kamala and it got help. So anyway, so it was accepted from one. Which one? Why um... it was accepted from one, not the other? Because reasons. I, I want you to tell me from the Quran what was the sacrifice, who offered what, and why it was accepted from one and not the other. Sama Allah knows best. Well, besides that, how about Muslims? Those who declare to us the Quran is the perfect word of Allah, easy to understand. This is not for us to know. Well, Allah would have told us. Measure. Allah, remember, remember, Allah works in mysterious ways. <laughs> that's that's in Christianity, not in Islam. In Islam, Allah does not work at all. Allah is sleep. Allah is in a coma. All right, go ahead, go ahead. Continue, to read, brother. He said what? Go ahead. He said, "Surely I will kill you." He okay, said, whoa, 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 whoa. Who, who, who is the one who said, "Surely I will kill you"? The good guy, the bad guy, the one Allah accept his offer or not? How do you know? He said, when Allah said, he said, for heaven's sake, who's he? The the one who was going to do that. Oh, the one going to do what he's going to do. Yeah, that one. 
the right you, one, you are, not the wrong one. You're doing a great, Lloyd, today you're doing a great job, man. I think we should call you Prophet Lloyd. Peace be upon him. No. I'm just I'm just doing my best here. You know, <laughs> and, and you're so humble about it too. Okay, so he said one of them says it's hard to be humble when you're smarter than Allah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he said, go ahead. He said, surely Allah only accepts from the fearer. Here, Ibn Kathir, like many other scholars, was able to come up with names for the two sons of Adams, but their prophet Muhammad was not. This accounts for the scholars' confusion in the interpretations of Kabil and Habil. But isn't this like Cain and Abel? Well, Cable and Abel? What Muhammad always does, what Muhammad always does, he like to write his Quran in the poetry form. So you have to have the rhyme in the words. If you open any page in the Quran, it doesn't matter. I, I, I literally, I can automatically right now go to the Arabic. Let, let, for example, here we go. Here is the Arabic Quran. Listen to this. Uh, this is chapter 5. Okay, I'm reading to you verse 26. The last word in verse 26 is Fasiqin. 27, the last word, Muttaqin. 28, Al-Alamin. 29, ah, okay. Al-Zalimin. 30, Al-Khasirin. 31, and nadimin You got it? I can do that yeah. all day long. Until, so the poetry of the Quran or the miracle of the Quran is a rhyme. How the words end. So sometimes, listen carefully now, my dear Muslim friends, sometimes the word in the Arabic language does not end the same way. So what do Muhammad do? It's very simple. He changed the ending of the word. He created words. That's why you see in my translation of the Quran, you see sometimes a word without any meaning. Why? Because what happened, Muhammad changed the last two letters in it, or the last three letters in it, and he made up a new word. So you have the word uh, fulfilling. Um, I don't want to end it with ING. Let's look for any word here. Uh, scholars, it ends with the letter RS. And then the word spend. It ends with D. Now, spenders, he add R-E-S to it. R-S, you know what I'm saying here? So if he has the word such, you add E or R-S for such. It will be suchers. What is what is S-U-C-H-R-S? -S? It's not a word, but it fit in the poetry. The rhyme of the Quran now is perfect. So we got the word Habil. The name Abel in the English language, Habil in the Arabic language. So what rhyme was it? Kabil. Kabil and Habil. Not Cain. See, Lloyd, I know you're laughing. It's not even funny. Cain <laughs> is... is <laughs> <different>. <laughs> like, what's going on here? I'm trying to help you out here and you're not taking me seriously. Cain is different than Habil. So you make it Kail. K Kabil, Habi, oh, it's rhyme. It's beautiful. Now we got the miracle of Allah, the Quran. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. So, and, and by the way, this is not just in that case. Let me give you some good other example. Let me give you some other example. Uh, let's see here. Hmm, what we have here. Uh, how about, how about, Talut and Jalut. <laughs> Talut and Jalut. Let me tell you the verse in the Quran. Talut and Jalut. Talut and Jalut. Let's go a new one. Come on, let's go here. Open here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's a great evidence that I know what I'm talking about. Talut. Talut. Here we go. Ta Loot. Okay. Uh, go to Quran chapter 2, if you don't mind, brother. And verse 247. 247. Yep. Monkeys. No, that's a cow, man. What monkeys? Two. You said two. And verse 247. Oh, 247. Sorry, I thought you said oh, You're missing 200 verse, brother. Concentrate so you can get it right. Praise Allah. Ha, ha, ha. 
Talut and Jalut. Finally. Here we go. And the Prophet said to them, Surely Allah has sent Talut as a king to you. All they right, let's talk with him. Oh, okay, okay. Who's Talut? That is Saul. Um, he's that he's that guy. He's that guy that that was that was there at the time. He was the guy <laughs> Allah was talking about. Yeah. He's the guy who Allah made a king. It is Shawl in the Bible. Shawl. Saul in English. Okay, the first king over Israel. The first king after Prophet Samuel. And then we have the second king after him is King David. Okay, Saul. Talut in Arabic is Shawl. Somehow Muhammad changed it to Jalut. Changed it to Jalut. Go to verse 249. Just a couple of verses below it. So when Talut marched forth with his Jund, he said, you know, Surely, yeah. Allah will test you by a river. So whoever drinks of it, so is not of me. You know what so happened he... here? You know what happened here? Muhammad made a mistake. He mentioned a name was a story because that's supposed to be Gideon. Which way? Yes, way, way, way. Say, this is Gideon. And those who bend down and drink in a certain way, they will be rejected. And those who drink in a certain way, and so they make the army smaller and smaller. Exactly. This is the story. I was about to think, I was thinking this is the story of Gideon. Yeah. Yeah, but Muhammad mixed it with Saul. But that's okay. Keep going. But he who does not taste it. So surely he is of me, except who scoops a scoop by his hand. So they he drink from the it. Story now. He ruined the story, but keep going. Except a few of them. So when they had passed it, he and those who believed with him, they said, we have no strength this day with Jalut and his troops. Who is Jalut? That He's is the Goliath. guy with the troops. <laughs> that is Goliath. The Palestinian, original Palestinian, the Greek guy which king david which at the time was a young man david a teenager david killed him was a rock in his face and forehead and he beheaded him by his own sword goliath so what happened here talut is the wrong name what is a perfect name fit with talut in the poetry of the quran in the rhyme oh jalut so he gave us the wrong name for the king and the wrong name for the guy who was killed by david is not of goliath now became Jalut. Talut, Jalut, Talut, Jalut. You got it? That is the beauty of the Quran. Talut, Jalut. Now we got now mixing Gideon. Now they're mixing Gideon with Goliath. Brother, there, there's some stories in the Quran. He literally mixed the whole world together in one story. That is the perfect Quran for Muhammad is when he never gave any names. When he never give any locations, when he never give any time, when he never, and just, you can, if you said, and the other one said to the other one, and the one on the right tells the other one, that was before they did that, and after they did that, without giving any details, you're good. But the problem is, when he gave any name in all the stories of the Quran, that is where we have a big problem. And what's the big problem? Huge errors. The Quran is a, is a book of errors, but they're huge errors because now we can put our hand on it and say wrong, wrong information. So rather than accept their errors, they say that the Bible is corrupted because the Quran can't be wrong. Absolutely. But what do you do, as we're going to see in our study for years to come, what do you do when the Quran contradicts the Quran? Um, you talk, you, 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 have you consulted a scholar this summer? I am much greater than any Muslim scholar. I call them dumber. In that book you have in your hand, I call them Muslim dumbers. Why? Because you do not know. Unless Muslim believes they are prophets. If you believe they are prophets, then they must be telling the truth because prophets do not lie. As we're going to see with Edris, who did not lie. All right, let's go back to our book. Forget about the Quran. We just give an example. Talut and Jalut, two wrong names, but the beautiful poetry and the rhyme and the names it make it, it make a big difference, man. It's good. It's good. So Kabil, Kabil, not Kabil, Kabil, Kabil and Habil. Woo, beautiful. Beautiful. Go ahead. This accounts for the scholars' confusion in the title of the interpretation. Kabil and Habil. But as we will see, 
The real names given in the Bible were Cain, not Kabil, which is translated as Cain in English and his brother Abel. And Cain is also Cain, which is basically a priest. Yeah. Cohen. It's, it's like Cohen, Cain, Cohen. It's a, it would be priest or something. Yeah, it's a little bit different wording, yeah. So the reason, in fact, would make, could they have changed it because they want to get a, away from the Jewish association and imply that these are Muslims? You have to understand that all the people are Muslims, Adam and his kids, but some of them are bad Muslims, like, like, like the yeah, one as we Israel. discussed earlier. Jesus was also a Muslim and a Palestinian. Sure. So then that leads to the questions: Why would the Palestinians kill Jesus? Uh, no, he was not killed, not crucified. It was made to appear that they killed somebody else, look like him. So who killed him? Because because the Jews only arrived in 1948. See, well, so these, these are mysteries that that we are left with. These are mysteries. The, the the older one, the one you do not know of. The other one. Oh, it's a, okay. So the other one, a, one the, knows. The one Allah knows very well. He knows him very well. We need to check with Agatha Christie about that. So. Okay, so the reason given by Muslim scholars for the trouble between Cain or Kabil, as they mistakenly called him, and Abel, was that Abel wanted to marry the sister of Cain, and he was the Stop elder. here for a minute. Let's stop here for a minute. You see, when Mother Eve, to fix the problem of ancestry in Islam, Muslim scholars come up with this good idea. Every time Eve got pregnant, she actually had twins. And every time, it's a boy and a girl, and a boy and a girl. Okay, you got this? Ah. So yes, now sure. we see Cain have a sister, Abel or Habil, Kabil, and, and I see this ridiculous name. And Habil also have a sister. Habil would like to marry Cain twin sister. So it seemed to me his idea in Islam, which by the way fit perfectly even today, that a brother is in charge of his sister. Do you know that in the Muslim world, your sister cannot do anything unless you say so? Okay? Now, that's a fact. A father is, he is the owner of the family. The father owns the wife and the children. So you're going to see that at the writing of Ibn Kassir, as we're going to read here. So now Abel want to marry Cain's sister. Why does not Abel go to his father, Adam, he said, I would like to marry your daughter. No, somehow the brother, because he was with her as the twin inside the belly, he's more in charge of his sister than, than his brother. But also he actually want to keep her for himself. Eh, go ahead, read. The sister was beautiful and he desired to keep her for himself and not give her to his brother. Adam commanded him to give her to his brother as a wife, but he refused. So Adam commanded him to offer a sacrifice, and Adam went to Mecca to perform the Hajj. Okay, how come much later when Hagar got there, there was nothing, and she had to run around looking for water? Okay. Well, but see, uh, Hagar uh, came at the time where people shrink. They were small. Adam was so tall, and he was so big, and he was able to walk any distance quicker, and and so he did not it, and life changed you know people change if, if See, adam was 30 meters tall how come the kaaba is 60. only one third oh, 30, yeah, 90, 60 cubit uh 90 yeah 30 meters that's right yeah so how come the kaaba is only one third of the height of adam i mean was he making a place for ants actually the kaaba was even smaller than that because because he, every time they remodel it, they make it bigger and bigger. Uh, he, that, that shows you that he has to be humble and he has to go down on his knee so he can go inside the Kaaba. Teach you humility to humble yourself before Allah on your face. This, this is an incredible story. This, this Okay, so, so Ant-Man, we should call him Captain Ant-Man rather than Adam. So Adam required the heavens to watch over his sons, but the heavens refused. Then he asked the oh, earth. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're reading too fast, man. You're reading like Muslims. That's why I don't like to read my book. How can did Adam talk to the heavens? Oh, heaven, would you please watch over my two sons and their sisters? And heaven so 
Boom, 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 no, no, not me. Okay, go ahead. You got it? I mean, when Muslim read that, does he have any common sense? How can heaven speak to Adam? How can Adam speak to heaven? Um, Because his head's in the clouds. He's so tall. Oh, uh, no, no, it makes sense. I got you. Go ahead. Then he asked what? The first. Okay, now when he spoke when he spoke to the earth, did he bow down, whisper to the earth, or he spoke while he's standing up because he's too tall, his mouth is far away from the earth. I can imagine he can talk to the mountain directly because they're high, but how he spoke to the earth. Imagine with me, Lloyd, Lloyd. We're talking about the great Muslim scholar Ibn Kassir writing to us this myth, this nonsense, this foolishness and you call him a scholar any muslim today even those who cannot read arabic who have some logic or common sense in my personal opinion are much smarter than ibn kasir i mean how do you judge a man you judge him by his own word you judge him by his action if i come to you and i told you lloyd i was in my way to your house and i stopped at the street corner and i talked to the light bulbs the the the, the, the street the light and i told i cannot go to lloyd and they said, no, don't go. So when he asked me, why did you come late? Well, I talked to the to the street corner building there, and the building told me not to come to you. Will you will you become really a good friend of mine or continue to have a relationship with me when you know I'm talking to buildings, I'm talking to the street corners, I'm talking to some light statement? How do you expect me? How do you feel about having me as friend when you know my mind is going crazy? This is anthropomorphic as well. I mean, if if the mountains are, are living, if the trees are living, if the, the earth is living, if there's seven earths. This is very strange cosmology. This is very strange theology. This is a very strange believe, philosophy. But Lloyd, Muslim believe Ibn Kasir is a scholar because he's giving them this information. He knows better than they are. You have to be stupid blind believing that the king is wearing that wonderful dress when in reality he's naked. That is what I'm trying to say, that we made the Ibn Kassir a scholar, we made al tibri a scholar, we made al Qurtubi a scholar, when in reality, they're a bunch of stupid people. No logic, no comment. If Muhammad said that, I tell Muhammad, you're wrong. You're not a prophet. You lost your mind. You're crazy. Right. Okay. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going, brother. Cain agreed to watch over his brother when they offered their sacrifices Abel offered a fat sheep, and Cain gave oh, from the unhealthy okay, okay. plants. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop, 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 stop. Go back to the verse. Let's read what Allah said in the verse. Scroll Cain up. agreed to watch over his brother. No, no, no. Up, up, up to the verse itself. Quran, chapter 5. It's going to be in a bold statement. Scroll up. No, scroll up in the same. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sorry, scroll up. Yeah. Scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. And read to me. What did Allah say there? And recite to them the news with the truth of the sons of Adam. And when they each offered an offering, Let's so it was accepted from one. Each offer an offering. Do you see any, any sheep there? Any fat sheep? Any, any skinny sheep? Any cow? No. Any goats? Anything? No. Now, how would we see know about it? Um, what, if, what if it was a big cow? Big fat cow? What if it's I mean, a it's pink, pink, pink elephant? It could be anything. So who gave Ibn Kassir the right to explain to me that simple words of Allah the Quran, which have no permission with that which we're reading downstairs, down in the palm page? Right, right. So how does he know? He made it up. Of course he made it up. That's why I call them uh, uh, fabricators, not interpreters. You cannot interpret that. Cain gave Fact. from the unhealthy plants. So unhealthy, okay. not just not just uh, some healthy plants. He got uh, how can you have unhealthy plant? A wizard dying, falling apart. Why even? Why even bother if you're going to offer some un unworthy plants? Hmm. Yeah. Move on. Yeah. So the fire came from heaven and took the sacrifice of Abel and left. The wait, 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 wait. Where is the fire in the verse? All what Allah said, it was accepted from one and not the other. 
Maybe actually it's the opposite. Maybe the fire came and ate the plants, the unhealthy plants, and it did not look at the fat sheep of his brother. How do you know which one was accepted, which one was 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 was, was rejected? Uh, the, the gospel according to Ibn Kathir, of course. Oh, the God, exactly, exactly. Keep going. All right, move on. Let's move on. We're going to lose time here. Yeah, and left the sacrifice of Cain, who became angry and said, I will kill you so you will not marry my sister. And he said, yeah. surely. Whoa, 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 whoa. How are you mixing the marriage to the sister to the offering and the accepting of the offering by Allah? What does this have to do with that? Um, because I don't know. Good, good. That's a perfect answer. I wish Muslim would, would answer like you. I don't know. Okay, let's let's go. On. Let's move on. Yeah, I mean, this is this is crazy. So. So now let us consider the killing of one of the sons of Adam. Quran 528 to 30. These words are recorded. If you stretch your hand against me to kill me, I will not stretch my hand to you to kill you. Surely I fear Allah, the Lord of the world. Surely I desire that you will bear my sin and your sin. Stop you here. Stop, stop, brother. Stop. First but of all, you cannot bear another Allah, sin. Yeah. 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 But when Allah said here, Allah, the Lord of the world, that is the language of the Quran. What does it have to do with Cain and Abel? See, Muhammad is using his language, his uh, vocabulary in every story which was copied from the Bible. Can can Cain can Cain carry the sin of his brother Abel? Can Cain pay for the sin of listen sin? I desire and that you will bear. That no, because oh. Jesus cannot bear anyone's sins. That cannot happen except here it's happening. All right. Okay, let's let's go to the Quran, Quran uh, chapter six and verse one sixty four. Chapter six, one sixty. One sixty four, one hundred and sixty four. Chapter six. And, and, and livestock, livestock. Yeah. Here we go. Is say, will I seek a Lord other than Allah, and He's Lord of everything, and every soul will not earn except what is against it, that no bearer of a burden bears the burden of another. I'd say that's a contradiction. Exactly. That's why I'm asking you to read that. If you don't believe that, go to Quran chapter 17 and verse 15. 17, 15, coming up. Whoever is guided, so surely he is only guided for himself. And whoever goes astray, he is only going astray against it. And no bearer of a burden can bear the burden of another. We're not going to read the rest of them, but if you go to Quran chapter 35 verse 18, chapter 39 verse 7, chapter 53 verse 38, you will see the same message. No person pay except for his or her own sin how in the world that good son of adam the one who uh, is offering the right sacrifice the fat sheep uh would make such a mistake or maybe uh, how can we can say allah put that doctrine or that belief in the quran as if it is true when in reality it's not Because huh. Ibn Kathir is a great scholar and he has knowledge that we as simple individuals don't have. Exactly, exactly. Must be. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Go back to my book. Well, hey, hey, <laughs> you're the best. And I, I really mean that you will bear my sin and your sin because, because reasons. Okay. So now, now I want to take it a little bit theologically deeper. Hopefully, my Muslim friends who are watching this can come to the logic or come or understanding. First of all, the doctrine goes against what we have read everywhere else in the Quran. But how can somebody die bury the sin of his brother? 
Is it not that what we Christian believe that Jesus Christ, the perfect son of God, died to bear or to carry our sins and the sin of the whole world? How can Allah put that in the Quran when in reality you as Muslim don't believe in that? Notice here. He said what? Surely I desire that you will bear my sin and your sin. He's going to pay for the sin of his brother. When Islam, nobody pay for the sin of anybody else. Mm -hmm. He will die instead of his brother. He will go on hell, the, the fire of hell, uh, instead of his brother. So that is salvation. Except that sin here, that sinful one will not be able to do it because he's not perfect. You cannot pay the debt of somebody else when you are in debt. Remember, they both have sins here. He said what? That you may bear my sin and your sin. So the sacrifice will not work because for me to pay for somebody else's debt, I have to be a free man and have the money or the qualification to set other person free. That's not what the Quran teach about these two brothers. Keep I suggest you need to consult a scholar. I know, I know. I just want my Muslim friends to use the logic and common sense and just ask yeah. the simple question. And trust me, the answer is in Genesis chapter 4. We're going to go and read it. We're not making it up. We're, it is there. We're, we're not going to make it up. We're not gonna, we're not creating it. It is all written. So if you're reading the Quran right now with us and found that it is a illogical book, it's nonsensical book. No, I mean it's a joke. The whole thing is a joke, and then you come to the conclusion, therefore, I become an atheist. You're wrong. The devil got you again. The reason Muslims become atheists is because they investigate the Quran and find it to be a comedy book or nonsensical book. But I want to take you to the story, the original story in the biblical account so that you know it is just your belief it's just your ideology it's just your book the quran is a counterfeit the real money is still there you can always go back to it and believe in it so go ahead, brother. interesting um yeah what well, yep so he sold he persuaded him to kill his brother so he killed him so he became of the losers no, By the way, we, I just I just received this from Mel. Thank you very much, Mel. Um, that's um, uh, Islamic origins. He says on several occasions in his an, an annals, Al Tabri mentions the Ras Al Jalut, or i.e. the exilarch ahead of captivity, who was the official representative of the Jewish community at the court of the Abbasid caliphs, and the Jewish counterpart of the Catholicos, who represented the Christians. So the office of Exilarch had been instituted by the Sasanian kings of Persia and was continued by the Abbasids. In none of his references to this Jewish dignitary does Atabri indicate what his functions entailed. And in one case, he even presents him as a contemporary of Jesus and Pilate. Oh my golly. <laughs> this is common though. This is actually common across the Islamic sources. It's not that unusual. That is crazy. That's so because that's Al Lloyd, Lloyd, because Atabri is a scholar. And you're gonna argue with Muslim scholars? Um, Come on. <laughs> yeah, that that is very. Yeah, no, that is All interesting right. stuff. Yeah. Let's now let's learn from the great Muslim scholar Ibn Kasir. How did that brother kill his other brother? Yeah. So how did Cain kill Abel? In his book, Ibn Kathir gives us two different interpretations, or indifferent. He wrote that Abu Jafar said that Adam was watching the sons when they offered the sacrifice, and he saw that the sacrifice of Abel was acceptable, but not of Cain. So Cain said to Adam that his sacrifice was accepted because you prayed for him and you did not pray for me. He secretly threatened his brother. One night, Abel was delayed in his shepherding, so Adam sent his brother Cain to see why he was late. He went to, when Cain went to Abel, he said, it was accepted from you and not from me. So Abel said, surely. It, it's well, burning him, man. It is eating him. Oh, it was accepted from you, but not from me. Go ahead. Yeah. 
So surely Allah only accepted from the fearer. Then Cain became angry and he struck Abel with an iron that was with him. An iron, yeah. I, I have an iron right here. <laughs> iron 6,000 years ago. <laughs> I have an iron. I mean, who doesn't have an iron near them? Don't, don't you have an sense. iron near you? Uh, I got some iron, but but my no, iron no, is actually, only... Hold it. No, no, no. My iron is there by my ironing board. My bad. What was I thinking? <laughs> uh, you see, I... but do you think... They, look, look, do you think Muslims know about when iron was discovered or who first man uh, was able to use iron for anything? I mean, does what? he does this think... Muslims were the first to create iron, and it happened in Palestine. Where Jesus was born. Where Jesus As was born, exactly. Was, and he was a Palestinian. Yeah, and, and and they invented the iron. And then they, it was much later on in the 20th century that they invented the, the electricity cord that, that attached to it. But, but, but they it, got... It, the cord was made out of copper, not iron. See, you're wrong here. Details, details. Oh, okay. This is <laughs> this is very odd. I mean, an iron like what? 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 What was it? It was an iron. You know an that as we're going to see in in chapter four after we finish Edris, Lord Zulig, we're going to talk about Noah. Amazingly, even Noah, when he built his ark, he was using iron on boards. Yeah, very weird. So, so iron is very known from the days of Cain and Abel, and also it was very known in, in Noah's days. The Muslim scholars were not aware iron was not available since it was not developed until about 1200 BC. So look, you've got the case of the time traveling Quran. I, but also, Muslim science created these things long before others, and it was only discovered by others later, but the Palestinians had it first. It must be the Palestinians, because they got all the answers for all the questions we have. Yeah. So, then others said, surely he killed him with a rock. He threw it... Wait, 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 wait a minute. Was it surely was iron, or surely was a rock? Do you know that Muslim used the word surely? Be very lightly, like chewing gum, surely. No, see, iron comes in the rock, so it was actually a piece of iron ore that was in the rock, so it was oh, rocky yeah. iron. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. You know what's amazing? When uh, I don't know if I wrote it here in my book or not, when you go to Al Tibri, actually, no, I don't think I wrote it. He said that, uh, he, he just use imagination, Lloyd. Look at me, look at me, brother. Look, look at me. Just use imagination. So now he want to kill his brother. So he he punch him. He, he go like this, and he, and he go like this, and he put his finger in his eye, and he and he squeezed his finger. In his ear. He was doing all that to him, and he does not know how to kill him. So Satan came to him. He said, "Do you want to kill your brother?" He said, "Yeah." He said, "Get a big rock and throw it on him." So he pick up the rock and he throw it on him. And that's how he killed him. Then Satan went to Eve. Are you listening? Satan went to Eve. He said, your son is dead. Your son, Habil, is dead. She said, what is dead? Oh, because he was the first one to die. So she does not know what is it did. He said, Satan told her, well, he will not eat. He will not drink. He will not talk. That's what it is. He's dead. And she screamed in her house. Ah! Ah! Until Adam came from outside, they said, Why are you screaming, woman? She said, Happy is dead. He said, No, may your curse be on you and your daughter, not on me and my son. I'm not making this up. I'm not making this up. And then that's when he discovered, Yeah, yeah, he, he was dead. Imagine with me is the imagination of Al Tubari to make up this nonsense, foolish story. And uh, you know what? If all the Muslim scholars are in agreement, it was a rock, it was a piece of wood, it was an iron, it was a piece. Of, if, if they have an agreement, I have no problem to, to say, okay, that's what they believe. But they give us 10 different suggestions with 10 different stories. And the best thing is how they end the story. How they end the story? Only Allah knows best. So how can they be scholars when they know nothing? They know nothing. 
they but surely they know what Allah does not because they surely killed him with the rock they threw it on his head while he was asleep except they strangled him with a strong strangling oh. and he bit him you mean it was not a rock it was not an iron it was a and strangling strangled him, and they strangled him with the cord of the iron oh now you put them together and then he, he tied the edge of the cord which is made of iron was the rock so when he throw the rock he killed them with the rock and the iron and the strangling oh mashallah oh i feel good man now i got the answer actually it was all three items yes <laughs> so this is um uh, you're killing me smalls <laughs> I, uh, you know, I mean, Mesh Allah, Mesh Allah. I mean, look, the thing is, in these, in this day and age, we have smaller and smaller things. Whereas back then, things were much bigger. They they didn't miniaturize, so the thing was very big. So when they hit him with it, it was was pretty bad. It must be. It had to be bad. I mean, what do you expect? You know, you know. Yeah. Okay, so. This is nuts. I mean, this is nuts. I and mean, this is crazy speculation. That is the right thing to say. We don't know. This is the right thing of the scholars, my friend. If you call that nuts, you insulted the scholars. Okay? No, but so they should just say we don't know. Yeah, it's sad. Now, let's talk. About, he, he killed him now. We don't know how, but it, it, it just happened. Now it's about the burial. As we continue with the beautiful, beautiful word of Allah. Quran chapter 5, beginning from verse one, uh, 30. Uh, 31. Yeah, go ahead, brother. In the story about the burial of the deceased brother, the reference to the raven comes from chapter 21 of a Jewish book, the Pirke Rabbi Eliezer. Which Wait a minute. Are you raven. trying to tell me? Are you talking Muhammad was copying from meth books and he thought it is true revelation? Um, yeah. Muhammad goes where he finds the truth and then he copies and pastes. Amen. But actually, it's not copy and paste. He copy and then ruin and then he paste. You know, it, it everything Muhammad wrote is a foolish counterfeit. He doesn't even copy the stories as they are. He likes to change them around, makes them even worse. Okay, go ahead, bro. <laughs> this is so, which tells of the raven coming to show Adam, not the brother, how to bury his son, as seen in Quran five thirty one. Which goes, so Allah sent a raven which searched the earth to show him how he might bury his brother's body. And he said, Woe is to me, am I unable to become like this raven? So I will hide my brother's body. So he became of those who regret. I mean, he had no problem to kill his brother, but he had a problem to bury his brother like the raven buries the other raven. No, because what, what at the the time, there, were, there were too many malls and too many parking lots, and it was very hard to dig. In that part of the world so there was no basic open ground and you couldn't just find a nice empty piece of land to bury and the shovels out. were made out of rocks or made out it was of a steel. walmart shovel it was kind of cheap and it wasn't good made in china was it made in china or made where i would i would say so yes i, I agree i concur i mean this is this is why would they it's plagiarism so if I, I wish I was Moses in Muhammad days, I can sue him and make a lots of money. But I mean, it's crazy how much it copies from other myths and legends and children's stories and oh. Gnostic stories. Everything. So the Every interpretation of this verse, according to Ibn Kathir, were many. Some said when Cain killed his brother, he carried him on his back for one year. Uh huh. Others that he carried him on his back a hundred years, and he was still the same when Allah went sent the ravens. Remember, the body of the prophet does not decay. And Abel, the was a good brother here, was a good one. He was a good, he was literally a good that's why his body did not decay. But other story he would decay. But for now, he's, he's a good prophet. Go ahead. After he saw the raven bury the other raven, he was sorry that he would have to do such a thing. But he did just like the raven and buried his brother. So ravens was, bury ravens. He can he kill his brother, carry him on his back for a year or a hundred years. And he have no sorry, he have no sorrow now because he's gonna bury him. He's really upset about it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I mean, why would anyone believe this? 
Why would anyone take this seriously? How else? How else can you understand the Quran unless you dig deep into the scholar's interpretation or what I call fabrication to come up with the answers for these questions we ask him? Yeah. So these scholars all copied from the Bible many stories without any details. His followers copied the story either with little changes or sometimes exactly as written. A good example of this was when Ibn Kathir listed the descendants of Adam as literally as if he were copying Genesis. I wish you were alive today, so I could ask him the question which I offer to my Muslim friends. How and where did Ibn Kathir come up with this knowledge of their names and their ages? Neither Muhammad, nor Jibreel, or even Allah knew anything about these people. Seth, Enoch, Canaan, Mahalil, Jared, Enos, you said here, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Yeah, the stories of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. I mean, they add another son to that. It's crazy. Yeah. And the last son is, um, son is Yam. And Yam yeah. is the name of the god. It's the And Yam is the Canaanite god of the sea. You're like, mm -hmm. huh? They are great inventors. Yeah. So one could go on and on because much has been written about Cain and, Cain and Abel, but this is enough. So, Muhammad said 104 books descended from heaven, 50 were descended on Seth, son of Adam. The Bible never mentioned such a thing, for the first writing we know was the book of Job. Second were the writings of Moses. Before that, there were no written scripture. Yeah, this now, is... will you believe Muhammad? Well, excuse me, are you going to believe Muhammad or are you going to believe you summoned that doc? Um, I mean, you so far you're making more sense than Allah, I'll say that. So I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, Isama. <laughs> Okay, that, that makes me feel good about myself today. Okay, forget about the non. By the way, guys, this is a short cut to the fabrications which Muslim scholars kept going on and on and on about the two sons of Adam. Literally, if I would write everything about it, my 750 book beige books would be 1700 or maybe 2700 beige. I don't know where these people have time and ink and paper to make up all this, all their fabrication because they're not even close to each other. You know, you can interpret a verse and you give me a little bit slight different to the right or to the left to the interpretation. But to tell me it was a rock, it was a piece of iron, it was strangling hard with his hand, strangling, strangling. Okay, but you cannot tell me this is interpretation. This is a just they're using their imagination and making up stuff. So let's look at the Bible and what the Bible said in Genesis 4. We we, we can, you know, just quickly go through this best brother. I, I, I really yep. don't want to. Yeah. Give me a second. Yeah. Uh, so I'll go to my favorite Bible, which is. It's my favorite too. I just use the blue letter Bible because I find it to be very convenient um, for looking at the, the Greek or the Hebrew. So we're going to go to Genesis chapter 4. Notice the names are written there and the names in the Bible have meanings, not as we see in the Quran. There's no names. And then Allah uh, uh, scholars and Muhammad and the wonderful followers of him, they made up names with beautiful poetry. I love the rhyme in names in the Quran. Okay, so go ahead, brother. Beginning from verse 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I've gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare no. his brother, Abel. Uh, uh, just a minute here. Adam knew Eve. It did not, the Bible did not say an Adam F. Eve, like Muhammad saying in the Quran. No. Adam knew Eve. A little bit polite way of uh, the, intimacy relation, the intimacy relationship between Adam and his wife. So go ahead, brother. Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Where did we learn that in the Quran? Do we have anything about that in the Quran? Uh, no, no. To confirm the Quran, we, are, we have to go to the Bible. That's what it says in the Quran. So we go sure. to the Bible, and it tells us what the Quran didn't. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Okay. Next. In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground as an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he brought of the first things of his flock and of the fat thereof. 
Oh, the fat thereof. That's Ooh, where the now we know where a prophet or a greatest scholar Ibn Kassir come up with the word fat. Yeah. All now, right. Let's ask a question. Who taught these two sons, Abel and Cain, to offer sacrifice? Who do you think they learned from? I would say from their father. Their daddy, exactly. And where did daddy learn it from? He God was Almighty. Given instruction by God, I would say. Remember, we read in our last broadcast that they, they both discover they're naked and God covers their nudity with skin. And that is the first sacrifice was offered. So obviously, the right sacrifice is blood. Why? Because as we will know from the reading of the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. But Muhammad have a problem with the cross. Muhammad have a problem with the sacrifice of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the sin of the world. So when he mentions sacrifice, as we're going to see, this is the one time we will talk about sacrifice. The second one is going to be about Abraham, which is taken from Genesis 22. When we get to it in the story of the sacrificed son in the Quran, this is the but only two times. In, I'm, I'm, in, sorry, Islam, in the Quran last week, we discovered that Cain and that Adam and Eve covered themselves with leaves. They actually, they actually uh, glue it. They they went to Walmart and they got this cheap glue from uh, Which China. Which probably yeah. got from Cain, you know, because that's because. Yeah, which is obviously the wrong kind of sacrifice. It's just kind of odd. It's interesting that parallel, parallel there. But yeah, but what I'm saying is Muhammad. Oh, yeah, on purpose, Muhammad removed sacrifice, removed blood. But he mentioned the sons of Adam, and one of them offers the right sacrifice. Why can't you tell me in the Quran, not in the scholars' interpretation, which I call Dummer's interpretation, fabrication, in the Quran, why he did not say that Cain offered one of you don't have to mention names, forget about the names, because he could not remember who did what. Okay, he was like oh Biden, he could not remember. So he said one of them, one of them offered a sacrifice, bloody sacrifice. That's why it was accepted. The other one offers the fruit of the earth. That's why it was rejected. So the sacrifice in the Bible must be blood. It is not good work. It is blood. And that's why it was rejected from one and it was accepted from the other. But Muhammad does not want to go there because in his mind, as he worked for his great God, the Lord of this world, Satan, he will remove Jesus from the crucifixion. He will. Right. I mean, I just have to think with, with the audience, having the Quran dissected like this, presented like this, and then discussed. I mean, the, do they see the same thing, that, that this story is oh, so... No, no, no. You see, here is a problem. In all my life, I lived in Egypt all my life until I finished college and I came to America. Most my Muslim friends, 99.9, .9, their parents would tell them, don't you dare read the Bible. Imams in mosques, you see, don't you dare read the corrupt book of the Bible. As a matter of fact, you tell them, don't you dare question the Quran. So here you are in a box. The Quran is a perfect word of Allah. The Quran is the only truth. The Bible is corrupted. Don't look at the Bible. Don't, don't question the Quran. What do you expect you're going to be? Ignorant. Exactly. Biased. Uninformed. But then why are they constantly talking about, look what the Bible says if it's the corrupt book? Well, because they are reading books written by other Muslims, like in the Muslim world, Ahmed Didat is a famous guy. I mean, literally famous guy. Uh, and Ahmed Didat was not even a Muslim. I challenge a Muslim to to debate me on the beliefs of Ahmed Didat to show you the man was not Muslim. But since the man know how to talk and know how to debate some ignorant Christians, uh, even when he debated James Swagger, Pastor James Swagger is a wonderful Christian man, not perfect, but a wonderful Christian man. And guess what? He told them in the beginning of the debate, I know nothing about the Quran. I never read the Quran. If I have met with Jim Swagger before he debated Ahmed, I will tell him, do not debate him until at least read the Quran. Give yourself a month off. Say, today is Monday, the January 1st. We're going to go to next month first. The first day of next month is 30 days. I want to read the Quran before I can debate you. Have James Swagger read the Quran once, he would have smoked Ahmed. Yeah. You know, I watched the one debate where he did, I can't remember the name of the American. It was in South Africa, in Durban, but this one American guy humiliated Didat in front of the audience. That was incredible. His name is, uh, it's actually a friend of mine, uh, Anis Sarouj. 
No, no, no. It was a different guy. Um, Didat said there's no verse that says that something about Jesus. And this guy said, hold on. And he goes and he opens the Bible and he shows some verse that says the opposite. And it was brilliant. It was an American. It was an American. Yeah. What, what American Shirosh, he, and he's Shirosh, he's in heaven now. He's a Palestinian Christian brother. He smoked Ahmed Didat. He made him right. shish kebab. Right. Anyway, any, any person, let me put this way, Lord, Lord. Any person who have some solid Christian foundation and who just read the Quran, you don't need, to, trust me, you don't read any books of scholars of Islam because they're not scholars. We're reading their writings right now. I mean, if you want to be funny and make Muslims laugh at the scholars, you need to know what these so-called Muslim scholars wrote. But if you're just a normal guy and you just know the Christian faith and you read the Quran, you're qualified. To debate in a Muslim. So, anyway, so uh, we, we we got now the the sacrifice of Abel and the sacrifice of uh, Cain uh, according to the Bible. Okay, uh, verse five. I think it was Josh. Was it Josh McDowell? I'm not sure. Oh, Josh, Josh McDowell. Good. Yeah. Josh McDowell is good. Absolutely. I think Josh McDowell just just floored him in that debate. I watched the whole thing. It was brilliant. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. Unto Cain. And to his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. And the Lord was he said, angry? Oh, was Cain angry at his brother, or was he angry at God? Angry at God. Why the Quran said he was angry against his brother? Why Muslim scholar emphasize that's what I'm saying? Because of the two twin girls, the Ooh, other brother had their more attractive twin. Sweet, hot sister who want to keep for himself, he want to give to his brother. Yeah, because the, of the two identical twins, the more attractive one was with the other brother. That's why. Exactly. Now, let's see. Let's see what the Lord said. What question God asked Cain? And why did God ask that question? Is it because God does not know? Or God wants him to realize he's heading in the wrong way? All right. Go ahead, brother. Right here. So, if thou doest well, Shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou dost not well, sin lieth at the door. You read verse 6, brother. Okay. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou All shalt right. rule over him. Notice here, not only God asked the two questions in verse 6, and the first question in verse 7, but God is warning Cain. There is a big sin is coming. You're angry? Do what's, do what's right. Offer the right sacrifice. Show me blood. I need a shedding of blood so your sin can be forgiven. And your offer will be accepted. Otherwise, there is a big sin coming up. You desire so much, it will control you. We're going to talk about it as we continue. Go ahead, brother. All right. Um... So, let me see. Verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Okay. Did he really use an iron? Did he use a rock? Did he use a strangling? How did he kill him? Does this really think? You see a grown-up man, uh, 25, 30, 40 years, does not know how to kill a brother? Does he um, put his finger in his eyes, in his ear, and and and, and push him or do something? He does not know how to. Kill. Does he really need to learn from Satan how to kill his brother? There's a As famous, a there's a famous biblical, a female biblical scholar called Ibn Kathy. Ooh, and Ibn yeah. Kathy says that uh, that he used jujitsu. Yeah, yeah. The point, Lloyd, is you don't need the dumb, low. IQ scholars of Islam to understand the Bible. You don't need it. No. I mean, this is not an important detail. I mean, we know he was killed. That was a sin. How the, that is not necessarily because it wasn't added here and the, and, and the detail is not available. So there's no need to invent the detail. You kill your brother in any way. You just, it's you know. Moral lesson hit, here. The, the lesson yeah, is the moral lesson. Hit him with a rock. Hit him with a, with a piece of wood branch. Knock him down. Strangle him with a rope. You, you know how to kill your brother. Go ahead. Right. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Whoa, I whoa, 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 brother. If God is God, how can God ask questions in the Bible? 
I remember I met with a young man who's an engineer, 30 years old, an engineer. And he told me the reason he became a Muslim because the Bible is loaded with questions which prove to him that the Bible has been corrupted by God. How can God ask questions if God is all knowledgeable? Hmm. Well, because he's giving you an opportunity. It's like, man, when I was a kid, I would do something stupid. My mother would ask me, did you eat that cookie? She knew exactly who ate the cookie. She can see the chocolate and the sugar powder on your face and your co cover of your lips. Yeah, exactly. And the chocolate all over my fingers. And it's a chance for you to to confess, to be honest. Yeah. So, 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 so when God asked Cain the question here, where is your brother? He did not say, I, I, I'm, I'm not my brother keeper. Okay, okay. If you see him, please ask him to call me or, or come by my office. Did God say that in the following sentence? Notice, notice. In verse 7, we know that God told Cain, there is a sin coming to your life. It's going to control you. You're going to do something real, real stupid. Now, in verse 10, in verse 9, God is, where is your brother? I don't know. What did God say in verse 10? Yeah. Interesting. You can do it too, says thou shalt not lie. It's an opportunity to tell the truth. And sure. he fails that test. And he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Oh, you mean God knows that his brother was dead and he killed his brother? He shed his blood? Yes. So why did God ask the question in verse 9? Like I said, the same way your dad says, did you break that vase? Exactly. Give him a chance to repent. Give him a chance to do what is right. Give him a chance to do what is right. Hmm. Yeah. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And Amen. it shall come to pass. Yeah. That's good enough, brother. That's good enough for the true biblical account. We can dig deep to the rest of the chapter. This is so much more coherent than the Quran. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and if you think about it, Moses wrote that 1,500 years before Christ. That is 2,100 years before those who helped Muhammad to write his Quran. I mean, you're talking about an old writing with more detail, with more understanding. If I will rewrite the story later, I could make it much easier, much clearer, much uh, uh, you know, uh, acceptable to the mind, not the way Mr. Muhammad and so-called those who help them try the Quran and so-called Muslim scholars trying to make up something out of it. So the Bible is very clear. We did not look at any uh, scholars, Jewish scholars or Christian theologian to help us to understand the story of the sons of Adam, Cain and Abel. By the way, we know their names. And, uh, and I know what I like it about how skeptics like to read this. Look, look, look. Look how much trouble we have in the world today. Look how all this, you know, this stuff coming out on the earth and it's not good and it destroys the field. That's, wait a minute. That is the curse. When you look at bad things happening in the world today, it is simply curse. It is the curse we brought against ourselves because of our sins. Don't blame God for bad things. Right. No, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, that is all very fascinating. Well, um, we have another portion in uh, in my book, if you don't mind. I we can escape some of this stuff. Blah 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 blah. People can read it on their own later. But I want to talk about the death of Adam, so we can uh, some kind of close that uh, the chapter, so we uh, okay. move on. The death of Adam. Yeah, yes, sir. That's one last page here, if you don't mind. The Quran does not mention anything concerning Adam's death. All that we know is written by Muslim scholars in the Hadiths. For Muhammad said that when Adam was about to die, he made a covenant with Seth and taught him the hour of the night and the day. That's very important. My dad came to me one day and he said, Lloyd, I need to teach you the hour of the night and the day. And I said, what? <laughs> uh, and he taught him the worship of all these hours. 
Yep. You see, Adam, don't forget now, Adam was a Muslim. And Adam used to pray the Muslim prayer. As proven later when, when, when Muhammad was taken from Mecca to Jerusalem, he prayed with Muhammad. Remember, he was standing behind Muhammad, and Muhammad was Imam Allah, Akbar, Allah, Akbar. And they all bowed down towards Mecca, standing up. They did the, the prayer, and, that's, and then Muhammad was taken to the seven heavens. But Adam was a Muslim, so he had to teach his son to be a Muslim. So Muslims that's were the first murderers. Yeah, and Adam was the first Muslim as much as Abraham was the first Muslim, as much as Jacob was the first Muslim, as much Jesus as was Muslim, the first Muslim. The first Muslim, and Muhammad was the first Muslim. They're all the first Muslims. Okay. You got it? Muhammad stated also that he taught him that the flood would take place. Ibn Kathir stated that the children of Adam were all demolished except for Seth, and Allah knows best. I love it. I love it. You got me that. I was going to say, how did you know that? Allah knows best. He also stated that Adam died on Friday. Was it this Friday or last Friday? It was Friday in the afternoon. I remember it was after the Friday prayer, like around around 1.15, 1.17, close to that. Okay. And he's buried next to the Kaaba. And if they would just dig up his body and show us the 30-meter skeleton, that would be nice, please. I'd be, we'd all have to convert then, wouldn't we? <laughs> I mean, like no, it would no. be so easy. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Listen, yep. what and then the angels yeah. came with spices. Okay, you, you're right. The angels came with spices. They were spice merchants. We all know that. The angels came with spices and brought a coffin from the garden from Allah. They comforted Seth, his son. And Ibn Isaac said, the sun and the moon eclipsed for seven days and seven nights, as if morning comes <laughs> death. Now, now, how Ibn Ishaq knew that? Uh, he was there. Oh, he, when he was there. I got that, that, that was... Well, he's got some photographs day. from the time because they... they because they, um, they... They had the first... The Palestinians had the first phone. It was called the Black Phone. Is this the one you put a quarter and you dial by hand right, right, circling? Which one are you talking about? It was like the, the first iPhone, except it was called the Black Phone. Oh, so, it's, it's uh, wireless. It's some, it's something like that. That was... Okay. Yeah, so... Is it someone go it, off and, and blow up a bomb and, and kill you like the Jewish people give to the Palestinians lately? Or different one? That came later when they realized they could do that. But that that was... They learned that from Jason Bourne because he was a Muslim too. But, but Jason we'll get Bourne... Him. Man, okay. I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited about the new yeah, <laughs> in, in 10 minutes, if we can read the rest of that page, I will say the Shahada and I'll become a good Muslim like Jason. Okay, so let's finish this. When Adam was about to die, he craved grapes from the garden, so his sons went to get them. I thought he only had two sons and one was dead. Okay. No, but we have other sons. So they met with the angels, and the angels asked them, What do you desire, O sons of Adam? And they said, Our father craves to eat the grapes of the garden. So they said, no, them, whoa, 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 whoa. We have a problem here. We have a problem, Houston. Why? Because according to the Quran, Adam was living in the garden, which was up in heaven. So now you make the sons of Adam to go to get some grapes from the heaven, from the garden heaven. Did they also have a camel, not a camel, a sonic a mule? Rock. Bullock, Brock, yeah. Does he also ride on a Brock to go up to the first heaven to go to the Garden of Eden so they can get some grapes for their father to eat his last wishes before he dies? He showed them his secret access way. Man, that's oh. amazing. Okay, okay. No problem, man. No problem. I'm, I'm so okay. They took, I'm return. they took his spirit and washed him and mummified him. Angel gibberish prayed over him and all the angels did, were behind did him. Did he pray the Muslim prayer or, or the Jewish prayer? Well, he must be a Jewish. Yeah, he must. No, he was a Muslim. Muslim. The Muslim prayer. Allahu Akbar. Did he Jibreel said Allahu Akbar? Or Elohim um, is great? It's not specified, but we can be very sure that yes, that was the case. Yeah. Then what, they buried what? him and they said to Seth, son of Adam, this is the way of life concerning your death and those who come after this. Wait a minute. Why did it not tell, 
Cain to Kabil to bury his brother uh, Habil and do the prayer over his body like they taught him about. I mean, does he wait all these years? I mean, hundreds of years later to teach him? Why can't you teach him? How about all the people who died before Adam? Any, any, anybody else died before Adam? Um, no, I, because there's a section in here that they took out where everyone's going, look, I don't want to kill it, carry a dead person on my back for a hundred years. Can we try something new? They learn the lesson, man. They get him better. No, it's not in the text, so we don't know. Oh, okay, no problem. no problem. So the scholars tell us the garden's in heaven. So how did they get to heaven to go get some grapes? <laughs> That's why you need the camel, the, the, the sonic mule, man. What is up with that? So it just makes no sense. I mean, it's just like there's so many assumptions here. Scholars disagree where Adam was buried in the number of years he lived. So Ibn Abbas and Abu Huraira state he lived a thousand years. Ibn Kathir stated this does not disagree with what is written in the Torah, where he stated Adam lived 930 years in Genesis. Wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me Ibn Kathir actually went to the Genesis account and read what is written in Genesis 5.5? 5, 5? I mean, how, I mean how, what kind of scholar is this to look at a corrupt book to come up with knowledge? Man, who knows? Who knows? Um, I mean, he got everything else wrong. Maybe look, even a stopped clock is right twice a day. <laughs> yeah. You know, so because there was doubt, there was doubt about what was written in the Jewish writings, but not, not about this. So I got you. This was not, there was no corruption in that session specifically. He knows that. Yeah. Exactly. So. Ibn Kathir stated that the 930 years, soul years, is acceptable considering that this could include the other years which he lived in the garden. This would be 957 years. According to Ibn Jarir and other Muslim scholars, when we add 43 years, he lived in the garden in heaven before coming to earth. Yeah, we know exactly earth. how many years in heaven he left before coming to earth. Notice now, notice, it's very important. Remember? Yeah, that's it's coming up here. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. It's, it's coming up. I, I forgot no. that I wrote or not. As for the years which Adam gave to his son David, we will discuss this in the story of David, because Adam gave some years to him. So much has been written about Adam that, in my opinion, this is ridiculous information from Muhammad and his scholars. And for the sake of time, we will stop here. Also for the sake of my sanity. <laughs> no, you're not worried about the time. You worry about your brain, huh? I want to keep some for my the rest of my life. I still have years to live, you know? I, mean, that, I like some coherence in a story, and this is this is not it. That is the best I can pick out of the writing of Ibn Kassir. Brother, as you go in that book, one chapter at a time, uh, you will see, I'm, I'm, God is my witness. If I will write some of the stuff these people talk about in depth, you'll lose your mind. I know for sure. you become a good atheist. There will not be God anymore. Anyway, so obviously from the Bible, we know more than that. Uh, we know how many years Adam lived, 935 years, and that is the total of the years of his life because he never was in heaven. He did not come down from heaven. He lived here on earth, and that's how many years he lived on earth, and that's when he died. Um, if you uh, remember the map we show you, or the, uh, uh, what do you call this, um, the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, what do you call this word, man? Can I get a member here? The drawing of the years of every people live. What do you call that? There's the genealogy. Oh, the, 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 genealogy. the genealogy of the biblical teaching all the way from Adam all the way to uh, Joseph as Mac. That's where we stop in that uh, drawing there. Uh, this is not information you can get from the Quran. In a simple word, Allah does not know how many years Adam lived. Only Ibn Kassir because he read what is written in the Bible. End of story. And as they can go and circle about the years which Adam borrowed to his son uh, David, which by the way are wrong. I'm not going to even mention it today. Okay, I was going to mention, but forget about it. Wait until we get to David. And so the number of years Adam gave to David make him live longer than that in the Bible. And Adam died 930, which means he lived younger than that, which is written in the Bible. Now, let me put it this way. I don't know how good salesman Muhammad was, but he must be a terrible one. Because he did not put two numbers in the Quran accurately. Not even two numbers in the entire right. Quran are accurate. 
So I'm done. I'm done with uh, with. Uh, do we have any question from our wonderful audience? There must be somebody ask a question or two. All I easy know. questions I would love to answer. All hard question, uh, brother Lloyd will answer, and we'll go from there. You see, it's easy. Uh, no, I think I mean the, the I don't. There are no questions as such. So lots of comments and lots of people laughing because I think this is very funny because they think this is ridiculous. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Are they laughing at the word of Allah or the teacher of Muhammad or Muslim scholars' interpretation? Well, I need to understand, brother. Because if they are laughing on me and you, that's fine. You can laugh at me. You can laugh at Lord. But if you're gonna laugh on, on, on what Allah said or what Muhammad said or what scholars of Islam said, then I quit. I'm not gonna do these programs anymore. No, I think it's just it's ridiculous. The, this, yeah. this, the way the story is presented. There's so many gaps. There's so much. It's so haphazard. It's, so, it's so not... The gaps is in your audience mind. We are telling the truth. Allah's word is the truth. You see? Have they said the Shahada and they convert? You know, I heard this for real. A man said, there's so much stuff I couldn't understand about Islam. It, it's just, it's not coming together. He said, all what you need to do is first say the Shahada. And then Allah will make, will open your chest, will open your heart. And it will make all these problems disappear. So I have a question. Yeah. To become a Muslim, you must say the Shahada. Mm -hmm. So before Muhammad was born, were people saying the Shahada to Muhammad? Because to now Muhammad. you cannot, if you say the Shahada only to Allah, because the Shahada with Muhammad is not in the Quran, only the Shahada to Allah is in the Quran. So the Shahada with Muhammad is outside of the Quran. So if you say the Shahada to Allah only, you're not a Muslim because you don't believe in Muhammad. So these were these Muslims because when they said the Shahada, and we don't know where they said it, they didn't Bro, say it to Muhammad. They said it only Bro, to Allah. I'm sorry. I don't think you heard me right when we talked two weeks ago. When Muhammad was walking in heaven in the garden, what did he saw in the sky? It was written in light. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. There is no God except Allah, and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. That's why Adam asked Allah, who is this Muhammad? I know there is no God except you. Who is that Muhammad? And Allah said, because of Muhammad, I created you. Therefore, Adam became a Muslim. So the Shahada is well known. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. From the beginning, Adam learned it, and he believed it, and he so thought Muhammad that... Muhammad was going to be born thousands of years after Adam, and Adam had to follow Muhammad, who was, who was coming much, much later. Sure, that's why when he, when Muhammad went to the the, the heaven and, and, and Jibril knocked at the door, and they opened the door inside the heaven after they said, who's there? He said, this is Jibril. Anybody with you? He said, okay, yeah, I got so... the prophet Muhammad with me. And he said, come on in, mashallah, so mashallah. I'm going to need you to follow the prophet Frankie. Now, Frankie is going to be born in the year 3125. So you need to start following him now, though, or Allah is going to be very upset. That's because if you don't follow Muhammad, sorry, if you don't follow Frankie, you're making this up. You're not, heaven, so you need to start listen, following Frankie. Listen, and if listen. you ask me what Frankie teaches, I'm going to have to tell you Allah knows best and don't be... Listen, this brother, you are you're confusing yourself. You're not telling the truth. Allah already told us the truth. We already know the truth. It is in the Quran and it's in the Hadith. And we know that when Adam saw Muhammad, he said, Welcome, my generous son. We've been waiting for you. Did you hear that? Adam was waiting for Prophet Muhammad to come because he saw written in the sky, in the light, there is no God except Allah and Muhammad is a messenger of Allah. He believed in him. You, you, you see, you see, Lloyd, if, if you see, no, that that's in the hadith. That's in the hadith. So it's not, speak to me only of the Quran because oh, no. I, Quran only, this is for them, not, this for the shameful Muslims, the Muslims who are shame of the people. Quran, then speak to the hand because... The ear and not listening. <laughs> yes, that's, that's what, what a friend of mine she used to say that you go like this talk to the hand, the ear ain't listening. Okay, never mind. No, this, this so, makes no sense. I mean, that, that makes no sense because you're not a Muslim believer, you are blind. 
So if you, Allah created Muhammad. Allah, for Allah will open your eyes. Brother, I'm just telling you. Allah will open your eyes. Allah will open your ears. Allah will open your mind. And you will see all the so, truth. So Tyler Bates is asking, if Muhammad was created for Adam and humanity, what is the need for other messengers? Because Muhammad was there from the beginning. It, well, the now, other, listen, listen. The other, the other messengers have to come first because they also are told us about Muhammad is coming after them. So they are like preparing the way for the world to accept Muhammad. The other messengers only came for specific people, but Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came for all mankind. Did you say police be upon him? Because that is the correct way to say it. No, peace. Police. Like, <laughs> that's what Hatun always say. Police and child protectors upon him. <laughs> this, this, this story is backwards and upside down. And um, Brother, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to lead you to the truth. You just say the Shahada. Everything will be just fine after that. I, no. I'm, yeah, look, I prefer the message of Frankie, who's going to be coming in about a thousand years. So I'm going to wait for Frankie because Frankie's got a great message. He's going to be here in a while. I just, um, I'm, and Frankie says I get ice cream with dessert every Sunday. Are you serious? I like ice cream. Maybe I should wait. Well, why not in a thousand years? Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, love it. I love it. I love it. We're not going to get to Idris today, of course, because Uncle Idris will take a little bit more time than five minutes. So we're not going to no. be able to do Idris today. No, but we'll hey, pick it up next week. Life is good. That's why we have another Saturday. Every Saturday is another Saturday. I'm sorry, Tuesday. Hey, we're going to have a show coming up. I want to announce to your people about uh, yep. wonderful. It's going to be two and a half hours. So we'll be ready for it. I will be teaching Israel. Or Palestine, so uh, would you uh, announce it a little bit? Give a little bit more. We about can do it? that on Saturday. Yeah, we can do the Saturday. I'll put out an, an ad for that. Yeah. So Saturday will be a good day for it. And if we go, if if we take a long time, I I can go fast, but I don't know how oh, fast. It's fine. I mean, we can do a couple of hours. That's okay. A couple of hours. Until it's two and a half hours. Two and a half, exactly, and that's fine. We can we can do that. All right. You know, Praise God. I will. Okay. I will have the coffee next to me. Hey. And I'll have my flask ready. Hey, Amen. How about ice cream? No ice cream? Oh, that's on Sunday. Um, you know, Prophet Frankie said on Sundays. But he's going to say that in a thousand years. I'm just I'm just getting ahead of the curve. Oh, you, man, you know you know more about him than I thought. It's okay. He's Don't worry. But we'll, we're going to write the book about him later after he's born. That's how it works, apparently. <laughs> I think you're you a very killing me, Smalls. You're killing me. Anyway, well, brother, thank you so much for allowing me to spend this uh, time with you and wonderful and your wonderful audience. I cannot wait for next Tuesday and Saturdays and whatever yeah. time the Lord will give us together. Appreciate you. Yeah. Guys, next week we'll talk about Idris and we're going to look at some of the odd origins of Idris from Islamic scholars uh, who seems to be a Roman and Greek god which is very, very odd. We'll look into that. And on Saturday, we'll talk about Palestine. And yeah, we'll certainly, we'll, maybe we'll discuss why the Palestinians would kill Jesus. Because as you know, the Jews only arrived in 1948. So Jesus was, if Jesus was Palestinian, then his people were Palestinians. And why they would kill him, who knows? Maybe the Palestinians can explain. So uh, yeah, we're, we're trolling. We're trolling, Eric. I mean, seriously, half the time I'm using sarcasm. I mean, it's, yeah, just that people find it hard to determine when I'm joking for some reason. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what. Here's a true story before we go. I was speaking to church on my seminar, uh, Israel or Palestine, and I was so serious, talking like a Palestinian. And my wife stopped me in the middle of my teaching. And she never did this. You saw my people are taking you seriously. You need to stop talking like that in the middle of my seminar, in the church. The church was loaded. I said, well, if they really believe that well, I believe what I'm saying and that's what's in my heart, they need more help than that. <laughs> it was wow. hilarious. I said, you saw me, you need to stop. People think you're telling the truth. Yeah, people, yeah, I know. But guys, try to discern when I'm when I'm being sarcastic or just using dry humor. Tell you what, if if in the end of the sentence I laugh or Brother Lloyd laugh, you know we're joking, okay? But if we continue to be serious until the end of the show, then we have a problem. We need to go somewhere else. <laughs> 
Yeah, Tyler, in the future, we can talk about Muhammad's pre-existence, but I've covered that before in the Sira episodes. Muhammad is effectively a deity, but that's we'll discuss that another time. So, Usama, thank you very much. Oh, uh, Eric says, I know exactly when you are joking, but Usama is a professor in the arts of trolling. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyway, God is good. Okay. God, appreciate you guys. Right. So, guys, thank you very much, and we will see you in a few days, and I look forward to having that talk with this summer. So, guys, take care. Thank you all for being here. Please drop your questions and comments in the, in the comments later, and um, yeah, take care. God bless.